in continuing with the technical aspects of putting our documents together, now that we had in the previous video prepped, if you will, our image, we can um, now bring the image into our document. And we do that, the only proper way to do that is using File in the main menu, Place. And so I will go ahead and use my place command. Now, your images, like everything, even type in InDesign, all end up in a box. And whether you can see the box or not is uh, up to you. But <clears throat> either we can create the box and then place the graphic in it, or in the case of a graphic, it will automatically make the box around it. I'm going to go ahead and start by manually creating the box first. And so I go up and I get one of these um, box shapes. Um, you can use either one, but the one with the X is typically the one you use for the graphic, even though you don't have to, because if we uh, print a fast version of our document without full resolution of the images, the boxes with the X will print with a little X in it so that you can see where the image should be. <clears throat> so I'm going to make a box and I'm going to go ahead and give it a stroke. Um, the, uh, uh, the, the tools, whenever we have a, um, a box um, and something in it, remember we can control the box separately from what's in the box. In this case, I'll go ahead and I'll put a stroke on it, <coughs> and I'm going to make it thick enough so that you can see it very clearly, and there it is. And then I'm, as I indicated, going to use File, Place, and I'm going to go and find my graphic, which in my case is the one I prepped in the previous um, video, and I will uh, pick this flower tiff image, and there is the uh, image in the box. And um, so now what we want to do is once we get our images in the box, again, don't drag it like we do dragging things from Photoshop to Illustrator. You should use your place command so it will be proper, properly recognized by the technical um, aspects of the document, which is specifically something called the links. <clears throat> it needs to know, the document needs to know where the original graphic that I just placed on the page is. And I will tell you that even if you don't completely understand um, how all this works, every time you find an image that you think you might want to use in your document, you need to actually get that image and put it in a folder with the InDesign document and keep all of your images together in a folder with the InDesign document because if you separate them or it doesn't know where that image is when you open up the document, it's going to tell you that the link is broken. And it's like uh, web pages operate that way. The document needs to know where the original image that was placed on the page is. So if you always put them together from the get-go um, in a folder with the document, then it'll take care of, I guarantee, 99% of the problems that people have later on when they start realizing they have missing and broken links and they don't know or remember where they got the images from or what has happened to them. So <clears throat> when you place it properly, here it is in the links dialog box and it shows up and at this point everything is copacetic. If there was a problem right in this area, we would get little symbols saying a warning sign or a stop sign that would tell us there's a problem. But at the moment, everything is going great. Um, now that we have our image, um, I want to talk about manipulating the images within the boxes. Once again, the box can be controlled separately 
with the black arrow <coughs> like so and the image inside the box is separate and with the white arrow with the white arrow you see I've got my little grabber hand and you can see I can move the image around separate from the box and um, as is often the case we might create a box and then we want in our mind the image to fit to fit the box and so that brings up an important dialog box and we'll come back to talking about this linking stuff in just a f uh, few minutes or in the next couple of videos but what we want to learn is an important um, dialog box and with the black arrow I'll simply click on the box to activate it and then we can go to object fitting I realize it's a bit off your page the first thing in the list if you will look I assume on your screen is fit the content or the graphic to the frame the next one is fit frame to content the next one is center contact the next one is fit content proportionately to the frame and that's very important because that's the one that we're going to use quite often um, uh, fill frame proportionately so we have a couple of different things if I say fit content meaning the graphic to the frame it did that um, and it doesn't really show up here but it might very well have distorted the graphic let's see if I can make that more obvious your box is much longer so I'll say object <coughs> fitting fit the content make it fit the frame and you may see that the flowers have been s stretched so that has distorted the image that would not be my logical choice what I would have done instead would be to say fit the graphic the content proportionately to the frame and so I do that and then what it leaves me to have to do is come and simply adjust the frame to the graphic okay so that's one it's either that route or we could um, say fit the frame fit frame to the graphic or fit frame to the content okay and that would then make the frame fit the graphic the other thing is that we often want to enlarge or reduce the size of the frame and the graphic together and if you just do the black arrow that is only going to do the frame so you have to use the command and the shift to keep from distorting the image and then you can pull the corner and you can size or resize the frame and the graphic together now if you're thinking about making the graphic larger you need to be very careful because that gets back into what we talked about in the previous video which is you start messing with the resolution if you make an image larger you're lowering the resolution and you could very well run the risk of making the resolution too low to properly print and that's what is um, the critical factor making the image smaller increases the resolution and that's not so terrible but making it too big and lowering the resolution too much can be and is a major problem so you need to be very careful about that and we'll talk more about that in the uh, couple of subsequent videos coming up when we look at the resolution of the image <coughs>